Hi and welcome to the Trading Bell Show. Now, Standard Chartered Bank have released their results, quite impressive. And I'm speaking with Chief Executive Kario Kingari to just dissect some of the factors that led to this and more. Kario Kingari, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And I want to congratulate you on three fronts. First of all, no one climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. I've just gotten to know that and running 21 kilometers. And of course, your stellar performance, 15% profit after tax. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank First you. of all, on the side of uh, real the movements, is, is there an inspiration behind it? Because now you're moving a lot and doing well. It's important yes. to, to stay busy yes. and some of these challenges to meet them yeah. and really enjoy doing it. And as someone told me, the mountain is there, so why not climb it? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And uh, speaking of the mountain, let's talk about uh, what you've done in the bank and your performance, which is quite commendable. Uh, looking at uh, some of the headwinds to what they are across the sector, many other things that are happening. And I wanted to just get from a glimpse from you and what are some of the factors that have led to this performance that you could highlight? I think one of the things is, yeah, we've had a, a very good performance for 2023. Mm -hmm. It was uh, on a macro front, it was a very challenging year, yeah. uh, but we managed to stick to our strategy. Mm -hmm. And uh, strategy execution is, was, was critical to attaining and really sticking what we call the, the four strategic pillars of uh, of the network, yeah. uh, affluent, mm -hmm. mass retail and sustainability. Really yeah. focusing on those uh, uh, those strategic pillars is what delivered the 23% revenue growth yeah. and then bottom line of 15% PBT and also a 15% increase in profit after tax. So being very clear and taking the opportunities because even in a challenging environment, there are opportunities that come the client's way. Yeah. And we're able to be there to either give them our balance sheet and mm -hmm. to help or give them our expert advice yeah. or to give them the opportunities to be able to do what they needed to do. And that translated into that 23% revenue growth. Okay. You spoke quite at length today uh, when you were releasing these results about your strategy. And I, I quote some of it, network affluent mass retail and sustainability pillars. Of all these pillars, um, which one do you see? Because uh, there, there's been a lot of questions about, is it in the mass market, is it in the corporate? Which one do you see as a key driver? I know all of them are contributors, but something that has really led to the numbers that we see. I think for now, mm -hmm. the two network and the affluent really are the biggest contributors. Okay. That really is, made, if you look at our overall numbers, yeah. like as I said, for our, our consumer, private and business banking, CPBB mm -hmm. as we call it, 15% yeah. uh, of the revenue is actually from the affluent segment. Okay. And then the network is a big contributor on the corporate side as well. Mm -hmm. So those we can say, that is our bread and butter, mm -hmm. our very strong areas of growth yeah. and opportunities. Uh, but we believe as well in mass retail and sustainability, mm -hmm. it's about the future. Okay. And the future is now. Okay. Uh, and in mass retail is saying, how do we solve this segment profitably? Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that it's giving a fair return? Mm -hmm. Because that segment, if you're not careful, it can really lead to ballooning of cost. Yeah. So how do we with our, net, our, our branch network, yeah. which is fewer, mm -hmm. for among the tier one, the fewest, how mm -hmm. do we ensure that we're able to cover a wide, uh, a wide coverage of the mass retail clients? Yeah. So our investment in technology, that helps. Okay. Sustainability is about now. We are talking about it globally. When we talk about mobilizing of funds, how do you get the money from the global north in to help the countries in the global south transition and really start doing matters climate? And how do we start understanding what we must do? That we are seeing is an area that we can, is an area of our expertise for us, uh, looking at our global network and how we can bring it here and how that can translate into, into the profitability in the years to come. If I take you like 10 years back, or even five, <clears throat> five to eight years back, mm -hmm. we never used to talk about wealth. Mm -hmm. It was tiny in our books. You're right. But we stuck to it because we believed it's the future. We could see it as we're getting more, the middle class continue to grow. Yeah. We could see Kenyans looking for alternative investment uh, yeah. options. Mm -hmm. And then we could see that this is going to happen. And we, we have started to see that come into fruition. Okay. Yes. You know, speaking about the mass market, I. We're in the news business, and sometimes we have had rumors coming out there. And there was a there was a creation as if uh, Standard Chartered was sort of uh, shying away from uh, the mass market. But listening to you today, there's still a critical factor of your strategy well, doing that. So I just wanted to clear the air. Are you are they still your core? You know, rumors is, is part of life, and yes. you can't respond to all the rumors. <laughs> but I think it's showing us talking about yeah. being a strategic pillar. Okay. You cannot have a strategic pillar and then you are exiting a, a certain segment. Okay. But it's a question of looking at it and asking yourself, how can I serve this segment profitably? Okay. Whichever business you are in, you've mm -hmm. always got to ask yourself, am I serving it efficiently and am I serve, uh, serving it uh, well enough to yeah. be able to give a return? Because okay. the shareholders are expecting a return. Mm -hmm. 
when you when you announce our results there was their shareholders were really excited that's what they are looking for mm -hmm. they're not looking for stories mm -hmm. so it's a question for us to say what are you going to do in the mass retail segment okay. how are you going to serve it profitably how are you going to widen the reach how are we going to ensure that we've got many products yeah. that these clients can engage with and yeah. in that engagement with our products and services then we get a fair return okay. hence investment in dig uh, digitization fair enough let's talk about the same customers you're talking about when i look at your loan book customer loans increased by 17%, which Sorry. definitely has a significance to this. And I wanted to know, what does this growth indicate about the market demand and your lending strategies? I think it indicated two things. One thing is, uh, as I said, the opportunities are there. Yeah. And so clients were looking for these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are there to help them. Yeah. And especially also, especially on the corporate side, uh, mm -hmm. we saw that clients, the opportunities coming our way and they needed either to expand or to launch uh, a new service or product yeah. or to expand. Yeah. Because a lot of the, despite it being a challenging, 2020, a challenging year, most of the investors are long term. Yeah. They've seen this before. Yeah. I remember meeting a client who told me, I've seen many cycles. I was here in 2007, yeah. and everybody was doing X, Y, Z, but we doubled down and said, Kenya isn't going to go anywhere. And that's, that's the long-term view we have of the, in, in this country as well. It's a very long-term view. Mm -hmm. So when we see the clients, it's challenging by the opportunities, and we're able to step in and able to give them a balance sheet for them to continue growing. Okay. And that growth was both in whether it's local currency lending or with the foreign currency lending okay. as well. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an area that, uh, that we're able to participate. And then also on the, on the private, on the, on the consumer, the CBBB side, yeah. we started seeing growth towards the end of the personal loan size. Mm -hmm. It was challenged at the beginning, uh, definitely because of the uncertainties whether it was new taxation measures. Mm -hmm. But towards the end, people started to calm down. You could start seeing people now more confident to start borrowing again. Uh, mm -hmm. We started seeing our mortgage books starting to turn. We started seeing uh, our, our requests for mortgages or personal loans has really ticked up around, from around November. And that has continued into these two months of the year, mm -hmm. which shows people there's confidence that they start to come back. Mm -hmm. And we are optimistic about 2024 because of what we are seeing, the general trend happening within our client base. Okay. You have a strong position on your assets and I was keen to look at your financial assets. And when I look across the board, uh, I mean, looking at your peers, you were told we call them that, um, there's been a bit of a cautious approach when it comes to especially government papers and securities. Um, you're not as well exempt from that. And I wanted to know what's informing this? In terms of uh, the reason we, we did, and especially when you talk about the government bonds and uh, why we, we, we sold off some papers, is really to take advantage of the market and yeah. the opportunities that arose. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing we, we as, as one of our strategies, we call it in our, what we call our asset and liability committee, which is ALCO, is that we'll always be a, a long, a long, a long a lender, a long lender. We don't, we don't play short. So okay. in the interbank, we are not active borrowing. Mm -hmm. We want to be a lender. So yeah. we have to ensure that we've got enough, cap we've got sufficient liquidity yeah. to be able to participate in the interbank yeah. and also have enough liquidity to be able to give uh, avail our assets to clients when they come to us yeah. and so there was a time it was challenging for us mm -hmm. and that's when one of the key actions we always prioritize to say this is how you build in liquidity one yeah. of them what most people most players might do is pay up for expensive deposits yeah that will always bring up of course your deposits yeah or you may make a decision like we took and said we'll sell off the the government the government the long dated uh, bonds okay. and paper because we're in a rising rate in, in, in environment. Mm -hmm. Those papers were probably 11, 12% because we yeah. bought them a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But when you reinvest it, yeah, you're reinvesting at 16%. So you're if right. you look at the circumstances and say, overall, yes, you'll take short-term pain, yeah. but long-term, it will be a very, very different. And I'm sure that will be reflected in our results for 2024. Okay, okay, great. Uh, finally, on the numbers, uh, talking about your NPLs, I noticed maybe in the last quarter there was a great improvement or something because now you're at 9.7% yes. uh, in terms of the ratio. Yes. What's the secret? What have you done? <laughs> I think it's, it's, been, it's been a long time coming. If you've yeah. been tracking our performance over yes. the years, that number has been way above the industry average. Absolutely. But it's something we've been working on with clients. What actions do we need to take, especially in the legacy names? These are names that borrowed a while back. Yeah. Is to say, how much provisions have we already taken? Yeah. What do we need to do now to actually clean up and say, let's just clean this up? Yeah. And then, what actions do we need to take? And then, having conversations with some of those clients and say, how can we settle this? We mm -hmm. don't want to make this prolonged uh, conversation or using the court system to go to keep on. Uh, the ones who are willing, 
we sit down together and come to a settlement. Yeah. That coupled with the growth that is uh, that has come through because of our assets has changed that mix. Okay. And we are really pleased that we are below 10% yeah. after a very long while. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations on Thank that. You. Now, let's talk about something that I'm quite curious about, and I wanted to ask you this, because when I look across the sector, you clearly look like you're playing in your league somewhere. And I wanted to ask, what's your competitive advantage? <laughs> I think uh, that's a good question. I think our competitive advantage is very clear. The yeah. network. Okay. We are the only international bank that is in Asia, mm -hmm. Africa, yeah. Middle East, Europe and Americas. Yeah. That's, it's a very big competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. When you get investors coming into Kenya, when yeah. investors want to come into this country, mm -hmm. you want to talk to somebody you know. Yeah, that's so true. maybe they bank with us in China, or they bank with us in Singapore, yeah. or they bank with us in India, yeah. or the bankers, they do business with us in the UK. Mm -hmm. That is a, a big competitive advantage. So yeah. we're always ensuring that we are fully lined up in terms of the way they operate. Because yeah. some of them may have their global offices in America, mm -hmm. or in New York, or Washington, or in London. Yeah. So we ensure that we've got a team that can support them there. Okay. That is one. Okay. Two is mobilization of capital. Because mm -hmm. you're in this market, you're able to mobilize capital. Okay. When you look at how much you're able to participate, if you look at, the, for instance, the, the recent infrastructure bond, yeah. and you see how much foreign investment came through us, into the government paper, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big number. We estimate between 20 and 21% that yeah. came through us. Just, just taking our portion, because that's all we could see. Yeah. And taking our portion, how much we submitted, and how much came from foreign investors. So we're able to mobilize capital, whether it's on, in such a scale or for big projects. We've been able to do some really big projects, even across the border in Tanzania, yeah. because of mobilizing the international mm -hmm. capital. Yeah. I think that's important. The second area, competitive advantage on the affluent segment. Yeah. We believe we've got a competitive advantage there. It's okay. a segment we understand. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a very, it's, a, it's a segment that clients want really personalized service, that understand what they need. So we invest a lot in training our people to be able to give their advice and to be able to offer them the level of service they need. And then finally, technology. Technology mm -hmm. for us is important mm -hmm. because it underpins what we are doing. Okay. That is what people want to be able to do banking or investment all the time mm -hmm. at their leisure. Okay. And we want to ensure that they can be able to do that. Wow, lovely. Yes. Let's talk about, still on the same thing, on leveraging on your uh, competitive advantage, having that global touch. I'm looking at Africa when you compare the Americas, when you compare to the Europe and all that, Africa looks like it's uh, somewhere uh, coming up. I, I don't know what you've noticed, but I'm seeing a lot of openings, for example, the Africa Free Continental Trade Area and all that. What are you looking at? Is there a strategic move that you're looking at to ensure that you leverage and grow the, you know, the growth uh, on African side? We, we believe that African free trade area will be a game changer for the continent. Okay. Because currently Africa is not trading within itself. It's, it's below 15% of mm -hmm. the trade that happens across Africa. Yeah. So we believe that that treaty, when it's finally ratified by all markets mm -hmm. and it comes to fruition, yeah. it will be a game changer for the continent. Very true. Because if you think about it, why should we be doing, if, if Ghana or Nigeria or Uganda across can manufacture things that Kenya can buy from, yeah. why not? Why, why not? not? Why do yeah. we need to go thousands of kilometers. Mm -hmm. So it will be a game changer. Yeah. And for us, it's say we are well positioned. Yeah. We are very, very well positioned. And mm -hmm. we've seen some clients who use Nairobi as their head office and they have started going to first within the East African community mm -hmm. and for some even across further out, yeah. uh, whether it's West Africa or Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. That to me is, is, is important for us. And we, we are well positioned for that growth. Yeah. We are well, very well positioned yeah. because of the way the bank is the bank is the, the way the bank is set up. Mm -hmm. you, 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 we, we are set up to follow the trade corridors. Yeah. Very well set up to follow the trade corridors. Mm -hmm. And we see that a lot of the clients when they want to move across, they want to have one conversation. Yeah. Yes, you have a business across Africa headquartered in Nairobi, you mm -hmm. want to have one conversation. Mm -hmm. You don't want multiple discussions in the various market. Absolutely. You just want to have one conversation. Mm -hmm. And we are well positioned because that's exactly how we are, we are, we are, we are, we are formed as, as Standard Chartered as well. Okay. Yes. As we come to a close, talking about sustainability and in two parts here, mm -hmm. one is sustainability of your results because, uh, of course, your shareholders, first of all, have you mentioned about the dividend yes. as well. Um, and what's the promise? Because we just want you to keep growing. <laughs> <laughs> we know the demand will always be there, yeah. and uh, we, we, we really appreciate the, there's the pressure from the shareholders that yes. look, I'm giving you a return, yes. and I have to compare the please, return. Please you mention it. I, I want to hear the dividend for them to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to ensure that the, the, the investment I've given you, yes. I'm going to get a better return elsewhere. Absolutely. So we are really pleased that we could offer info, we'll be putting forward in the, 
in the AGM, the bull will be recommending a dividend of 23 shillings. Wow. Uh, that coupled with the interim dividend of six shillings yeah. uh, makes uh, gives 29, 29 shillings for the full year 2023. So we are really pleased with that with, with that result, and I'm sure the shareholders are pleased too. Impressive. Yeah. What is how do we ensure this this is sustainable? Yeah. Is being very clear what we want to do. Yeah. I think uh, being very clear this is what we'll do, but also in strategy being clear what you can't do. Yeah. I mean, it's always the most painful okay. thing because it's always very easy to be everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But if you're everywhere, then you, you're not able to offer sustainable returns. Mm -hmm. So we believe that uh, Kenya has opportunities. Kenya has is continued to grow yeah. with, the, with, the, with the Kenya Kwanzaa government and the, challenge, and the, the options they are putting on the table, trying to attract investment to this country. Mm -hmm. We shall benefit and we will continue being in the forefront of ensuring that we're helping the country benefit. Yeah. And that is what assurance we can give, a sustainability. Okay. Ensuring that... We are, we, are, we, we, we are sticking to what we must do mm -hmm. and then protecting what we've got and building on our capabilities and continue to invest. Because a business, you must reinvest. You okay. cannot fail to invest. Okay. I think that's, that's the only assurance we can give. I'm concerned, by the way, not actually concerned mm. because it was a positive. You, you looked at your tailwinds and you said, wow, we, we have an onward way of probably ensuring that sustainability, which is the one that really makes you happy that we are still progressing well. I think that uh, the main tailwind that I, that I really see well is the global economy opening up. Okay. I think that's important because yeah. uh, we've seen Middle East, you know, Saudi Arabia was not a player, mm -hmm. a big player. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia has become a big player now. Yeah. Uh, we can start seeing the government to government uh, deals that the two countries are, are, are undertaking. Yeah. So when we start seeing that corridor opening up, mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a bank, we have Standard Chartered in Saudi Arabia that we went very recently, which is doing phenomenally well. Okay. Again, that's a corridor that is opening up. Okay. When we start seeing whether it's the US, again, the economy starting to get, to get better. Mm -hmm. Europe again, inflation coming down. Yeah. We are really, we are really uh, in, in, ingrained in the global income, uh, economy. economy. We are really in there in the mm -hmm. global economy. So when okay. those economies do well, mm -hmm. Kenya starts doing well. You're right. Yeah. The other day, I saw some very colorful pictures. You did some sustainability uh, report, I believe, and I wanted you to highlight one or two things in it, and what's the promise on ensuring that your bank mm -hmm. is running sustainably. I think one of the is I want to highlight is in our operations. For yeah. instance, in yeah. in this building, um, ninety-seven percent of our waste is recycled. Oh, so we've got a very uh, all the waste that we re we produce is recycled. Yeah, the water we use in this bar in this in this building in our bathrooms is recycled water for the bathrooms. So yeah. we do not. So we are managing that. Mm -hmm. And then the we've just put uh, in our car park solar mm -hmm. panels. Mm -hmm. So during the day we use solar solar energy. Mm -hmm. So we are very proud of that. And this building and all our branches have been satisfied as plastic free mm -hmm. so we do not single use you'll never see a bottle of plastic in, yeah. our, in our water yeah. so those are some of the initiatives we are taking uh, to ensure that even us as a company we are a responsible company and we're able to demonstrate we are doing something internally yeah. to ensure that by 2025 uh, we are carbon neutral in terms of the emissions that we emit okay yes Fair enough, and I want to end by asking you this because m the movement to sustainability is not a simple thing as well. It is not. It's also a costly thing. Yes. And I noticed your cost as well had an impact a bit, a bit. I think at twenty percent. Is that part of the reason why, or maybe you want to expand on that? You, 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 you have to do it. It's, yes. it's, it's, it's uh, when it comes to matter sustainability. Yeah. Climate is real. Yes. What you're talking about, uh, what is happening in the world today, the threat from climate change. Yeah. Because of what we do is real. Yeah. So you cannot say it's, it's not a cost. It's yeah. about the future. Okay. It's about doing something for the future. Yeah. And do saying, I will ensure that my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, mm -hmm. not forgetting my grandchildren, <laughs> my great-grandchildren <laughs> will enjoy the kind of, something better than what you've seen. Very when true. I was growing up, I remember Mount Kenya was always snow-covered. Mm -hmm. Mount Kenya is not snow-covered anymore, especially yeah. some certain times of the year. Yeah. So it's a question of, will they see a, a snow-covered Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. or, will they see, or will they just see a bare rock? Yeah. I think that's important. So we don't see it as a cost. Mm -hmm. You must do it. It's a cost of doing business and you're investing for the future. That is, uh, that's what we believe in. And then in terms of the 20% the growth in cost, mm -hmm. a lot of that is driven by continued investment in technology. Yeah. It's our competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. We will continue investing in it because yeah. we believe that's what's going to be there. That's what our clients want and that's what gives us a competitive advantage. Yeah. So we shall continue investing in, in, in that space as well. Yeah. And then there's operational costs, especially for staff, performance mm -hmm. pay increases because yeah. mm -hmm. you have to manage inflation and all that. Okay. So we are, we are pleased, but most important, it was positive Joe's of 3%, 23% revenue growth yeah. and 20% cost growth. So 3% uh, revenue growth. Okay. I mean, uh, cost Joe's, that is important. Okay. Very important.
Wow, I could have asked more questions, but time is up. Thank you so much for your time, Karaki, and Thank congratulations. You. It's a pleasure. There you have it, Karaki Ngari, very optimistic and saying, listen, we still have more room to even do way better, especially for the you, the shareholders. Thank you so much for your time. I live in with the markets.